I suppose the best way of looking at this is, is that mobiles is actually the driver of the internet itself. That in the developed economies, we've gone and wired up every house, every office. We've gone and put computers on every desktop. But what folk want is to have all the stuff with them all the time, constantly in their pocket, in their car, in everywhere else. And mobiles has just satisfied that need. We thought it would take decades to do what we did in fiber optics and copper in the air. And the industry has just gone and done work easy. So up comes 3G, then 4G. These speeds are amazing. And so the mobile industry is kind of the darling of the internet right now, and it's driving almost everything about the internet, including V6. So some of these kind of things that emerge are really quite fascinating. And I suppose the first thing is, there's not one mobile architecture and one mobile model. It's actually quite a big battleground that they're the mobile carriers, the radio providers, who kind of think, well, we paid all this money for the spectrum. Obviously, they're our users and we own them. But if you scratch the surface, what you actually find is three quarters of all the handsets run an operating system built by Google. They run Android. And the other one quarter, well, Blackberries aren't really much there and neither is Windows Phone, it's pretty much all iOS. So in the operating system, it's this huge issue between Google and Apple. So when Apple come out a few months ago and say, here's a technology in iOS 9 that will block Google ads, Google are kind of going, I'm sorry, there's a lot of people out there on mobiles, what's going on? But it's not just them, it goes up even further in mobiles. Because now the application providers, Facebook, Netflix, look at the platform and go, hang on a second, we don't trust anything. We'll do it all ourselves. And so you get some very, very strange outcomes where between the radio carrier, the platform, Samsung, HTC, whatever, the operating system, Androids and its variants and iOS, and then the application, they're all not working together. They're all trying to exert control. And one of the big things we're actually looking at right now is this area of control of handoff. There isn't enough spectrum out there. If you ever try and use your phone in sort of the middle of the day at some crowded central business district, it's not going very fast. And so what we'd like to do is hand it off to the wired network as quick as possible. Who controls that handoff? Is it the application that says, I can see a Wi-Fi, I, the application, will move? Is it Android or iOS? Or a new offering by Google called Google Fi, where Google says, no problem, leave it to me, I'll do it. Or is it the carrier themselves, the ATTs and Verizons of this world? And so when you speak about one mobile industry, it's kind of one mobile arena and a whole bunch of folk busy playing subtly separate games. The outcome of this is always exciting. Will V6 actually work? Well, there's an awful lot of effort going on in V6, but equally there's a whole lot of effort going on into stranger and weirder gnats. Between the two, I'd like to think V6 is going to win on this. I'd really like it. Maybe it's an emotional call, but there's a lot to look at and a lot to understand. And right now, certainly, I think it's the most exciting part of the internet today as to what's happening, not just today, but just even tomorrow. This stuff is just so much in a state of flux.